Thank you very much. We are here to bring you the story behind the music you love and to introduce you to the men who make that music at Orchestra Hall. You'll also get to hear an informal and easy-to-understand discussion of music and its interesting personalities and what's more. You, listening right now, have an opportunity to win two main floor tickets for a concert by the Chicago Symphony Orchestra at Orchestra Hall. And today, let's turn to the page in your symphony scrapbook devoted to the violin cello. And we have with us Mr. Theodore Ratzer, member of the cello section of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Mr. Ratzer, I'm sure our audience would like to have you identify the passage that you played at the beginning of this program. Not too well known a cello passage, I think. And perhaps play some more from that composition. Well, that's uh, from the prelude to the Twilight of the Gods by Wagner. <laughs> an interesting uh, rhyme the other day about the uh, cello and something like this. The, um, the cello's tone is rich and broad. It's fun to play, but uh, very hard. Its literature goes on and on, so do not overdo the swan. Uh, I know the, the literature of the cello is uh, rather extensive. I've heard references to the uh, the fact that because the cello strings are rather heavy, that is in comparison to the violin, and because the bow is uh, comparatively short compared to the length of the instrument, and because the keyboard is rather long, uh, that it's a very difficult instrument to play. What would you say about that? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I think all instruments are rather difficult to play, to play properly. But uh, as you go back in uh, your experience, say the early days of uh, playing the instrument, uh, did you feel there was any special difficulty? Of course, I, 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 in a way, this is an obvious question. I, well, I, I know gets, anything is easy if you know how to do it. I think it gets tougher and tougher. <laughs> the farther you go. Uh, that is, as you as you get nearer and nearer to the virtuoso uh, uh, stage, the, the the pressure is harder. Yes, I think so. Uh, well, uh, have you ever played another uh, instrument? Another string instrument? No, never. So uh, you don't have much basis for uh, for comparison. No, I have but not. but would you say among uh, say among the strings, the violin when the violinists and the violists and the cellists and the bass players uh, get together before or after a concert or uh, on one of the uh, many trips that the orchestra makes during the season, um, do they ever talk about the comparative difficulties of the instrument, or is there sort of an ethical code which keeps them off that subject? No, I don't think there's any code, but I don't think that there's... The comparisons are very difficult to make between the different instrumentalists uh, not having played the other instruments. I think the composers write the harder things for instruments that have more facility than, like, the bass that doesn't get to too many notes, like a violin. And well, say, in comparison, that leads to another question. In comparison with... Uh the uh, classic composers, say the three Bs, uh, do um, do modern composers demand more of the uh, orchestra players, of the instrumentalists, would you oh, say? Oh, yes, quite a bit more, I would say. Uh, is is that because the um, instruments have been developed or the, the facility of yeah. the technique of playing has been uh, the developed? The technique of playing has made rather rapid strides, I would say. Uh, of course, the uh, the uh, the cello as a cello is not a very 
old instrument, comparatively speaking, is it? Well, goes goes back a few years. I mean, in, in, its, in its present uh, present form. No, not in its present form. Mm -hmm. Of course, I think uh, uh, not only do a lot of people uh, misspell the word violin cello and think it has something to do with a violin when it, it, it doesn't, but I don't think very many people realize that the, the word, when we abbreviate it and call it just a, a cello, it doesn't mean anything, really, as far as the word is concerned, because it's... Uh, Cello means little, and it's uh, it's it, it's not a, a big violin, but it really is a small double bass, isn't it? And uh, of course, there are the the instrument, the ancestor of that is an interesting instrument, the viola de gambo, which uh, you had to uh, hold between your knees. And it was uh, there are two things about that that interest me. One is why no one thought of putting in a peg so that you could rest it on the floor until what was it about fifty or a hundred years ago that uh, or a hundred years ago they oh, did something that. like that. I would say. And uh, the other interesting thing is that uh, I, I read a reference somewhere, I don't know whether it's true or not, that putting the peg on and making it an instrument which uh, rests on the floor has opened up the, uh, uh, the cello as a uh, an instrument for, that women could play. And uh, someone just the other day, a member of the orchestra, told me that uh, up uh, until comparatively recently, I don't know whether it's just in certain uh, countries, that the women played the uh, the cello by holding it on the side sort of because side it wasn't saddle. It, side saddle <laughs> because it wasn't dignified for them to uh, uh, hold it between their knees. Is that, uh, yeah, is, that is that right? I had I had never uh, never heard of that. Um, of course, one of the uh, the great names I know in cello literature is uh, is Bach, um, a name that Casals I think has made uh, famous. And uh, doesn't every cellist have some? Uh, a Bach uh, unaccompanied sonatas up his sleeve? Oh, I guess so. I was wondering if we couldn't have an illustration of that. I'll play a little of the Bore in C major suite. <laughs> ask you a question about uh, your instrument. Is that a very old uh, instrument? Yes, it's a rather old instrument. It's a French cello. It was given to me by a very dear friend of mine, John Hornsteiner, that was a violin dealer here in Chicago for many, many years. In fact, from before the Chicago Symphony Orchestra was known. He always, uh, I never knew him very well. He used to come around to uh, concerts uh, very frequently. Um, but he always impressed me as being a very interesting man. Uh, had a very interesting face. He must have had a wonderful sense of humor. He sure did. The amount of stories that there are about John Hornstein, why anyway, they're <laughs> they're too numerous to mention. Well, he was one of the the great instrument repair. Yes, uh, he comes from the Hornsteiner family from Germany. That's well dates back to the late 1600s. Well, he was uh, such a uh, well-known uh, character to all um, string players around here. I think it might be interesting if uh, you, you told one of those anecdotes about him. Well, it's, I've been fishing many times with him, and well, of all the stories I can't even think of. But there's one that's rather interesting about a certain violin that was purchased, and uh, was supposed it was a Strad violin that was bought purchaser why there was some doubt about authenticity of it and uh, oh after a year of hesitating he finally asked John about the instrument and John said uh, well no the top of that instrument is not genuine well, he says, well how do you know it isn't genuine well, John said, well I'll tell you I made it myself uh, well uh, that's, that's that's very interesting in other words even a great uh, violinist 
uh, wasn't able to to tell that. Oh no. Yeah. I know many uh, many musicians uh, used to uh, come to Chicago, uh, make a special trip here, uh, just to have their instruments looked over or checked over by uh, uh, John Hornsteiner. All the great artists stopped um, in to see John. <laughs> oh, I know that the uh, the cello is uh, uh, often assigned a very important role in symphonic uh, uh, compositions. They're they're not, um, but other. And is there enough uh, cello literature um, to uh, uh, give the cellists uh, any variety? Or well, there's apart from the swan. There's quite a bit, but not uh, not to the extent that there is for violin or piano, which is natural. Well, what about the uh, concerto literature? I know you must have uh, some concerto in which you're especially interested. Well. I can play a little from the uh, stock concerto that isn't heard very much. I think it's had two performances here, once with Wallenstein and once with uh, Theodor Gorski. I'll play the we have some of that? Thanks ever so much, Mr. Ratzer, for being with us today. And now we're happy to send a pair of tickets for a concert by the Chicago Symphony Orchestra to Mr. and Mrs. W.A. Anderson of Milton, Wisconsin, for their card. They uh, write, uh, tuned in on the Chicago Symphony scrapbook last Saturday and thoroughly enjoyed it. Keep up this service. And they say, how do you know the, whether the anecdotes are true or does it matter? I'd say we're never sure whether the anecdotes are true. We like to receive any anecdotes connected with music, and I think it makes no difference whether they're true or not. And I'd like to refer to a card sent in by Mrs. Carolyn M. Hill, which interests us. She said, ever since I became a shut-in, I listened to your program. Sweetest selection, there's no wasted words, everything clear. Uh, and we thank her for sending in this card for our program. <laughs> 